your complete seven day forecast. We are in the mid 70s on your Wednesday. Take a look at Thursday behind that front only in the mid 60s. A perfect holiday start if you're getting out of town with upper 60s. Saturday, 40% chance of showers. It's a pretty good bet on Sunday, but it's not going to be raining the entire day. There's going to be some dry breaks in there. Monday is Memorial Day, a couple of more showers, and then Tuesday back to temperatures in the low 70s. But look at those lows in the upper 40s to lower 50s, so no air conditioner needed. People probably aren't complaining about that because it can get pretty hot and humid this time of the year. Yeah, no doubt about that. I think, again, just like we were talking about last week, it looks pretty good to me. I can't yeah, complain. And I was does. actually at the beach, Wrightsville Beach, which is down in Wilmington, yeah. over this past weekend. So I went right before it gets super crowded, which is <laughs> Memorial Day. But I know you got something uh, going on possibly down there in the south. Yeah, we were talking about that low pressure in Florida. It's going to be a big bugaboo for the beaches in the Carolinas. Take a look. Well, the official start to the hurricane season is a week and a day away. Mother Nature has other plans. Recall the National Hurricane Center has already declared a low pressure that was east of New England back in January as the first subtropical storm of the season. We are watching an area of low pressure near Florida that will spread its moisture along the Carolina coast for the Memorial Day holiday and potentially feed off the warm Gulf water and become a subtropical storm or tropical storm, regardless of whether it's just an old-fashioned low or subtropical or tropical storm. It won't be the best beach weekend from Myrtle Beach all the way to Wilmington, North Carolina, but it's not going to be a system that triggers any evacuations. It's not that kind of a system, whether it develops or not. It will spread its rain north into the mid-Atlantic, so not the best beach weekend along the mid-Atlantic coast, and also some rain locally, but definitely less than one inch, and we are not expecting any flooding problems locally. Early season tropical storms in April and May, though, have become more common lately. Tropical storm Anna was a late April storm in 2003 that developed several hundred miles off the east coast dissipated as it pushed into the Atlantic. Subtropical storm Andrea was an early May storm in 2007 that flirted with Florida's Atlantic coast. The next year later, tropical storm Arthur developed May 31st near Belize, dissipated as it tracked into Central America. And in 2009, we had a, the first tropical depression of the season, May 28th, off the East Coast, and dissipated as it pushed deeper into the Atlantic. 2012's tropical storm Alberto developed off the Carolina coast. Instead of coming on shore, like this storm will do, Alberto stayed east of the Carolina coast. Anna returned on the list six years later in 2015 and became another pre-June 1st tropical storm. This storm closely matches the analog to the upcoming late week storm. And note, Anna made landfall in northern South Carolina, brushed I-95 before scooting off the mid-Atlantic coast and dissipating. Incidentally, Anna only produced a third of an inch of rain in Beckley and less than that in Bluefield. Other early season storms, including Arlene in late April 2017, Alberto in late May 2018, Andrea in 2019, Arthur in 2020, and Anna once again in 2021. The common hot spot for development with these early season storms, the warm western Atlantic between the Bahamas and the Carolina coast. According to the National Hurricane Center, May subtropical storms occur pretty frequently. Subtropical and tropical storms have been frequent in May in the past two decades. Do you have any statistics to back up the early trend of these tropical storms starting before the official start of the hurricane season, which is June 1st? Yeah, so last year we were doing a, a little bit of study on that, and we, we found that about half of all years in the past 10 to 15 years had at least one storm prior to June 1st. So, but it's not abnormal, although I will say that all of these storms that have formed, they generally tend to be shorter lived and they generally tend to be these hybrid subtropical types of storms. Right. Um, so they're not like, you know, full fledged hurricanes in, in most cases. Does an early season tropical storm tend to foreshadow an active Atlantic hurricane season? No, not really. Um, we've had mm. systems that form in May before and then the season, you know, might have long pauses uh, without any activity. Um, and not only that is, you know, the conditions, the environmental conditions that occur in May may change by the time you get to the peak mm -hmm. of the season and it can make, you know, conditions just totally different and have different activities. So there's really not a strong correlation between what happens before June 1st and then what happens later in the season. Storms moisture is definitely needed in the Carolinas where normally dry spots have developed over the last several months. Now we keep referencing the term subtropical and tropical. Let's be clear on the definition of both of these types of systems. 
Simply put, a subtropical storm is similar to a tropical storm, except it garners energy from a nearby front. A tropical storm is its own entity and feeds off the warm ocean water to get stronger, and they usually develop far away from cold fronts, but can merge with fronts as they approach the coast. Of course, stay with your storm watch for weather forecast. We will give you the latest details on the soggy Memorial Day weekend approaching the region. For now, though, this is Storm Watch for Chief Meteorologist Chad Merrill for Newswatch.